Francisco Sula, yes, I am your host, Norman Santos, and today is Silver Crew. This issue will have you storming. Oh my, it's like a something, 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 dark side. Dark side, something? Young Skywalker, something, something, dark side, something, something, destiny, man. Also joining us today is Sephir Hudson. Now, if I were a princess, what would I be? What would I be the princess of? That's my question. Huggy Wuggy. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> Damn it! We're turning that thing off, right? Because I can't afford that. <laughs> I can't afford the cash money. Uh, no, you're going with your so body, can you get your cash? Oof, that's gotta be rough. <laughs> uh, also, also joining us today is Totera. Well, okay, why, is, why does everything always have to be about princesses? Can't there be a prince or something? Like, people need to open up their eyes. Uh, there is. <laughs> it's Prince Shining Armor. Not- is he a joke to you? <laughs> yeah, yes. he is. <laughs> That's not a word. <laughs> I need to control my stuff. I, listen, I'm an Aries, and it works, okay? <laughs> also, this is Lexima. She's crashing in my room. Hi, yeah. please give me huggy wuggies. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Look to Safi, the princess of huggy wuggies. All right, get in here. <laughs> I mean, if you want to, go ahead. I like hugs, but... I am, listen, I am the princess of Mimi's demand. Yeah. I'll go with that. <laughs> and I will spew memes throughout this entire uh, podcast. All right, you didn't say yeah. Also, Lexus is joining us. Co- um, guest starring, yes. Yay, starring guest. Yay. Yes, please. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm starting to think this wasn't a good idea. (laughs) (laughs) This story turned out to be a fun episode. Yeah. Yeah. What are the horses doing today in this comic? Ah, glad you asked. Uh, Because in this story, uh, Temple Shadow travels across Equestria to learn more about friendship and come face to face with her past. So, yeah. um, Well, I I kind of jumped forward there. But yeah, uh, in today's episode, we are going to review... The IDW My Little Pony comic issue 67 and 68. I'm 24. Tempest Shadow travels across Equestria to learn more about friendship and come face to face with her past. Yes. So, anywho, Silver, what are your thoughts, first impressions? This has been my favorite IDW story in a long while. It's it's really well done. The art is beautiful. The story works great. And, a, and most shocking of all, it presents Cadence in a positive, proactive light. My God, I didn't think we'd ever reach this point. Yeah, Cadence can, she can do almost anything if she sets her mind on it. Except she doesn't. She usually goes, Twilight, solve this for me. (laughs) Save me. Isn't that the default? Also, um, anyway, Sappy, what do you think? Oh gosh, I didn't think I was going to enjoy this comic as much as I did, but I did. (laughs) I don't know why, but Tempest Shadow is, like, my favorite reform villain right now after this comic. Like, <laughs> I just love her thing where she goes on, like, why isn't there a princess of a military? It's like... <laughs> <laughs> I love that. All right, you know. And Tara? Oh, I really like this. Like Sova said, we pretty much took the words out of my mouth. The art, I really like. I also liked how we got more backstory off of Tempest or Fizzle Pop. You know, she has two names at this point. And I just really enjoyed it from the beginning to end. Yeah, agree, agree. Because this yeah, was a fun one. I want to say, like, I, I I haven't read that. I'm reading it now. I'm, like, looking over, like, the beginning part of it. People wouldn't be so, like, uh, resentful against her while she's traveling around if she didn't have the actual symbol on her at all times. <laughs> you know? Or she would at least, you know, change up her style a little bit because she looks like a villain. Just saying. True that, true that. I mean, one of the few issues I had, minor be that, is the symbol on her flank. But let's not get into it in depth for now because, well, as for me, I like this comic. This comic really puts Tempest in a nice shadow. Or a nice light, yes. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> so, anywho, if you guys have not read this comic yet, uh, pause your and go do so. Welcome back. I uh, hope you enjoyed the comics. So, let's get into it. Uh, so, we start off the comic with Tempest getting the hell out of Ponyville. <laughs> she, she likes it, 
but she won't stay there because it's too friendly. It's a bit creepy if you ask her. They want to give her all the huggy wuggies. <laughs> See, I knew you were going to incorporate that. <laughs> Uh, yes. Well, I mean, they give her f- friendship problems galore. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Tempest here likes it, but she's not going to stay there because it makes her feel uncomfortable and stuff. And so, anywho, she heads out to travel all around Equestria, just visiting every place or, yeah, ev- just visiting everywhere. She stumbles upon the deer from Yevafri, uh, heads to Chikoltog. How do you spell, how do you say that, Silva? Appaloosa, Horsululu, New Horselians. Is the Did I go one, past? Yeah, it's oh, a, Sh- Shikoltgo. Chikoltgo, <laughs> no. Okay, I, I know it's Chicago because of the deep dish pizza there. And I heard it's really oh, delicious. The, the deep dish pizza. The Blues Brothers are carrying a police car with a hot pursuit, and you're focused on the deep dish pizza? I'm hungry! Norman! You're looking with your stomach and not your eyes. Open up your eyes! <laughs> right into that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I gotta say, I, I, agree, I agree with Lux that it's not the smartest dynamic to carry the Storm King's armor here about. She gives a justification for why. But you could at least scratch out the symbol. At the su- same time, King Aspen there, giving her the evil eye while he tells his son Bramble, don't get close. He invaded Canterlot with, with vines and gave rise to any number of rule of uh, rule 34 jokes. He is in no position to be that judgmental. I mean, do you know what the fan wants? Well, think of it, think of it this way. Maybe the Storm King's rule like extended out to that point, you know? You never know. Considering they're non-canon, that's very possible. It's like <laughs> we were totally being invaded too. We're relevant to this story. Oh. Witness me. I mean, we didn't see like freaking Star Swirl and the uh, legends, uh, but it was like meant to be at around that time when they got out, so it could have been. You know what we also didn't see? Twist horribly murdering several storm guards. <laughs> Jeez, that girl's a killer. What is your deal with like oh, Twist? God, yeah. Everyone thinks Twist is named so because of her love of peppermint. No, that's what she does to Nex. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, not going there. Oh, boys. But anywho. <clears throat> I'm totally going there. Oh. Look, I'm on a morbid death talk these days. Oh. I'm dying to talk about it's it. It's been a week, Silver. <laughs> it's been a week. It's been a very morbid week. <laughs> it's very... No- Morbid Norman. Oh, boys. But, but anywho, but anywho, um, as we carry on... We, Hello, Clarice. <laughs> as we carry on, we get to see uh, Tempest traveling from location to location, from uh, Appaloosa to Horsolulu or Honolulu to... Well, what it should be called is Horsolulu. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well done. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, to even New Finland. <laughs> oh boys! What did you do with the old one? Uh, dump it. Wow! Just cut to the chase, huh? Yep, yep, yep. So, so <laughs> Tara, do you know anyone from Newfoundland? Nope. I, yep. I, I, uh, I, uh, I knew people from there before. Uh, Newfoundland's Canada, right? Yes. Yeah, uh, it's, it's in that very specific spot where the time zone's not right, right? Yes. Yeah, uh, dual cartoonists used to live there. Hmm. Huh. Yeah, so I used to know people from there. But anywho, continuing on, um, the ponies of Canada, they tell uh, Tempest that if she wants an adventure, they should travel to the north, to the Crystal Empire for adventure. And yeah, she takes the advice and heads there. And upon arriving in the Crystal Empire, she's greeted by Princess Cadence, Princess of Love. Oh my god, she has cotton candy hair. Everybody loves her. Oh my god, is Tempest going to find a love interest? No! <laughs> uh, you wish. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, kinda. <laughs> kinda, sort of, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I'm jumping a little ahead to Nightmare Nights, but I gotta say... Hey. Oh, I heard it. <laughs> oh, boy. <clears throat> but, anywho... But, but so, I love... 
I love Tempest's description of uh, uh, Cadence. Her name is Miyamori Cadenza. If that name didn't sound flowery enough, she goes by Princess Cadence. <laughs> it's like Tempest is just looking at her, and the Edge Lord is saying, "I despise everything about you. <laughs> you are my enemy, and I would do anything to destroy you." Okay, they're bad because I'm Batman. And Cadence is like, "Please give me huggy wuggy." <laughs> You would think, but no, no, no. She's she's pretty calm and collective, and she greets Tempest with a warm smile and you know one of those friendly things that princess should do and stuff. And Tempest here, her attitude towards Cadence, like Silver mentioned before, she hates her guts and whatnot. Cadence shows Tempest around the castle, and Cadence asks, "Um, you don't really like me, do you?" And Tempest is shocked, like, oh, well, no, no, I, I don't, no, I, I, I don't, don't like you. I mean, that's, <laughs> it's everything you represent. Yes, that's the thing I do not like. I mean, uh, you got a princess of, like, Celestia Luna. They make sense. They make the sun and moon rise. Ooh. And you got you and Twilight, princess of love and friendship. What does that do? That, that technically does nothing. I mean, wouldn't it be better if there's a princess of, uh, what you call this? Uh, the military and explosions. <laughs> yep. We already have a princess for that. His name is John. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was Michael Bay. <laughs> no, Josh. Josh looks well. Yeah, I, I like that. It's the fiery Joker for Princess of Explosions. Yep. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Now we need just Larson to deem it. So <laughs> give him wings. Yep. Yep. Or give him a can Red Bull. So anywho, Cadence oh, laughs at the idea, okay. and nah. She just explains that she understands why Tempest thinks so. And to summarize it, there's more to love than just uh, romantics between two ponies. Uh, it's It takes many forms in the shape of love for family, love for friends, and love for country, and love of self. So, Silva, so you're better explaining this. Well, basically, love is a pretty broad sweeping term. But what is love? Baby, don't Baby, hurt, don't hurt me. me. <laughs> love is not restricted to romantic love. It takes a number of forms. Basically, you could have a military commander who very much loves their country or loves to see the enemy defeated. Or, as uh, Patton once said, I love it. God help me, I love it. <laughs> nice. Love can be for a lot of different cases, but the like legit definition for it is to do things that would benefit others above yourself. And so if that means, like, you know, being in a romantic relationship or ruling over a kingdom or, you know, just being, like, some sort of leader in some situation or maybe even just, like, a hero of some sort that just goes off and, you know, does their own thing just to protect whatever land that they have or thing, that's love. Yeah, I can agree with that. And uh, onto that, uh, Caden says, it makes me stronger, but beyond that, it makes those I love stronger. So, yeah, that makes sense. Well, Tempest has pretty much the perfect counter-argument to that. That didn't save you from getting turned to stone. <laughs> <laughs> it's still love. <laughs> I mean, if you're fine with it, it's, it's just how it is. I think I think Tempest loves pointing that out. It's like, it's like, girl, you got taken out of the first few seconds, and you were the easy one. <laughs> All right, Luna got in a few shots. She did? I thought Cadence was the only one that fought back, and Luna just tried flying away. Luna got several hits as she was flying to get help. Celestia got taken down, unfortunately, while she was giving instructions to Luna to go get help. Yeah, right. Cadence put, tried to put up a shield, but it didn't work. Yeah. And so she got turned to stone, and I'm like, good God, girl, to, you need a time to shine. When are you going to get time to shine? Oops, series over. Sorry. Oh, well. There's still a few episodes left. I'm not bitter. You're bitter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that'd be that'd be great. Princess Cadence saves Equestria in the final episode. <laughs> and therefore, they say, you know what, Twilight? We were wrong. We're going to have Cadence take over. <laughs> yep. You're relieved. Uh, no, nah, man. No. Nah. You, you want to know what could be um, insane if the final episode where uh, things were about uh, things as grim as they are. Sorry, Grimma wants to save everyone, activates the time traveling spell, and suddenly we're into G5. No! 
<laughs> oh no. But anyway. Norman, you're going to create a paradox. Oh no. But anywho, um, yes. Shadow points out, well, the things that we mentioned before. And Cadence just says, oh, okay, you win on that one. But anywho, I got a joke for you. Um, there's troubles beyond the border, so I need you to go to, uh, what you might call this, uh, my patrol ponies and help the person out because stuff. Uh, GG, have fun. So the next day, we get to see Tempest all wrapped up in scarf and a beanie because it's freaking cold in the winter north. And she goes to the Arctic Patrol office. She meets up with a friend, per se. And, well, said friend is... What's her name again? Did you catch her name? I'm not getting it here. Oh, Glitter Drops. Yes, Glitter Drops. So yeah. I demand a pony named Huggy Wuggy. <laughs> but can I just say, Tempest is really sort of... She's kind of becoming a, a speaker for my own thoughts. <laughs> it's foolish for the Crystal Ponies to live in a place where their entire life and well-being are tied to complicated magic. <laughs> if it fails, the whole empire would find themselves at the mercy of the elements or worse. It's like, it's true! These ponies are stupid! Cadence is like the one competent critic of Equestria. You mean Tempest. Oh yeah, C- Cadence is uh, what sh- is being criticized. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah, but still, oh man, Tempest... Oh, but, but the logic here is Tempest has been away from Equestria for a long time now. So she kind of lives off the land like a normal creature without magic. But anywho, she visits... For the most part. Yeah, but anywho, she visits the Arctic Patrol office and meets up with... Uh, what's her name now? Glitter Drops. And Glitter Drops is surprised to meet Tempest. Backstory, they were close, close friends. And yeah... Glitter just hugs Tempest, and you can see Tempest is not having any of this because she doesn't like the huggy wuggies. Well, more than that, this is the one of the ponies from her flashback that basically cost her her horn. I mean, that's a bitter pill right there. Well, yeah, wouldn't you, wouldn't you be angry if someone lost your horn, um, made you lose your horn? Because then that way you can't be horny no more. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say phrasing, but you fully committed. I salute you. Thank you. <laughs> This is where the huggy wuggy memes come in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Lux, I think you brought out the worst in us. Or the best in us. Depends on how you take it. <laughs> it depends on your perspective of it. Yep, yep. <laughs> Norman, don't say take it in this context. <laughs> I mean, really. Yeah, you, you shouldn't say that. <laughs> I mean, really, Norman. You're shocking upon me. <laughs> but anywho. <laughs> so, Tempest is having none of this and tells Glitter to... Cut it because she has a job to do. And Lita seems a bit shocked by this. Like, what did she do wrong and stuff? So, they travel and... Yeah, poor Glitter. Like, she is so confused at what's going on. And Tempest is just giving her the cold shoulders. In the frozen north. Actually, it's kind of funny. I think this environment is warmer than Tempest right now. <laughs> yep. Uh, so, anywho, they go on their uh, mission. And while they go to their case, Tempest just thinks about previous things that Twilight done, like how she tricked Tempest to participate in a event for Podyville, something like that. And yeah, she can smell the reek of princess meddling in this one. Yep. Well, you gotta give Cadence credit. Somehow, does she have like a network of spies? Or, do, or has Twilight been keeping tabs on Tempest and said to Cadence, hey, I've got this character coming. You remember that unicorn that turned you to stone? Good times. Well, she's on her way. <laughs> but no, no. We established that Cadence didn't know. Did we? Yes. Um, did we? Tempest is suspecting that uh, she did know that somehow Cadence has orchestrated this. <laughs> she was oh so careful not to mention her past friends, but still. Yeah, well, still. Uh, breaking out of the train of thought, they arrive at the house on the border of the Crystal Empire, to see a um, old pony mending his fence. And in all honesty here, I think the old man is at fault here because Tempest just says, what's the issue here? And suddenly, they bicker? I mean, explain it to me. Who's in the wrong here? Well, one, Tempest doesn't even start with a greeting. So I think they're used to more cordial 
uh, interactions. Because what's this, this fellow's name? Icy Shanks. Oh, God, he's going to shank you. <laughs> so her first act is to come up and say, what's going on? So, and he's used to being a little a little friendlier, a little more back and forth. Say, hey, how you doing? How's the dog? Right, that makes sense. And he offers her hot cocoa and on and on. So Tempest is more to the point, but he responds to her hostility with hostility. And he even goes to, so far as to point out her broken horn. I'd say he's the more hostile. She starts it off with provocation, but he escalates. Yeah, but, but you yeah. know, honestly, I mean, isn't this how... Uh, okay, maybe the way of how uh, city folk thinks and the country folk thinks are a bit different. Probably that's the case. Mm, that I can't say. Yeah, but Tempest should actually greet the person, say hello, what's going on. Sure, but doesn't. Yeah, but, but anywho... Um, uh, glitter drops here just uh, breaks him up and asks what's going on and yeah the old man is not giving any info ASAP and this pisses Tempest off and she wanders off alone to find out the problems and stuff now we get a bit of backstory about the situation and how she lost her horn because Kuma just slaps her in the face and whatnot. wait I'm sorry Kuma? I'm calling the Ursa Kuma you know, from Taken. Remember? Actually, I first I hear a coup, and I'm instantly thinking Samurai Jack, and then you go, Ma. It's like, Mommy? But anywho, Glitter just asks what's her problem and stuff, and they argue for a bit, and Glitter just says, What did I do? And Tempest gets really angry and says, What did you do? What did you do? While pointing a fish at Glitter? Like, what? Oh, she's just doing that for the halibut. <laughs> Something's very fishy about that. Yeah, yeah. But the, the art by Andy Price here is just priceless because it's a very dramatic... Ah, priceless! Uh, it's a very dramatic moment where Tempest is just expressing her feelings. The art here is powerful. Like, you can see the dark lines, the s- strong sketch and whatnot. Suddenly, a fish! What? Safi, Lux, you want to get in on the fish puns? I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Me either. <laughs> I guess me and Silver are the other ones with puns. Well, prepare to get schooled then. Oh, there's a lot of fish. But anywho. That's just quoting bad <laughs> movies. <laughs> but anywho, um, Tempest just says, uh, this is ridiculous. Where did this even came from? Which makes sense. Because fish are in the open. And Glitter just sort Uneaten, no less. I mean, there's not a single bite mark on that mm-hmm. thing. And... If I, when you look at the number of fish that they are they are falling on the trail, this thing is really wasteful. True that, true that. And the thing is, um, I see his friends was broken and a bunch of his fish got stolen. When you sit down and think about it, why does a pony want to have fish? Ain't there vegetarians or whatnot? And ah, uh, the fish is not... Well, I mean, he needs them to feed his other animals. Yeah, I was getting to that. And he states that um, the fish for his dog. Uh, what was his dog's name? Something, something, something. Dark side. So yeah, um, he's. They were stolen, and it seems that the culprit has leaving a trail of fish along the ground. I don't know why, but Tempest says, "All oh, right, this is an opportunity to catch the culprit. So I shall run off ahead and stop the culprit. Yay! You're gonna die. You're gonna die." So she she rushes off just to find the culprit, and in her mind she doesn't need help from Glitter because she's commanded Tempest, she conquered kingdoms. Um, she show like she's just egotistic at this point. Like she knows better, and she gets close to the track and suddenly hears a roar. She discovers that the thing that she was chasing is a bear. Ooh, not just any bear. It's an Ursa Minor. And she's on the ground, scared, scared, really, really scared. And off in the distance, Princess Cades is shouting, Bet you wish you had some love now, huh? I like to think that Cadence is just secretly shipping these two. (laughs) That's why she's a princess. Probably, who knows? Or she's probably expecting Tempest to protect herself, since, you know, Cadence is always protecting herself, since Shining Armor doesn't do a lot of stuff. (laughs) Shining Armor's taking care of the baby. (laughs) 
Wait a minute, wait a minute. Secretly shipping these two, you mean Tempest and the Bear? <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know she shipped that way. Tempest Minor. <laughs> oh god. Oh god, no. What well, could be Ursa Shadow? <laughs> Well, honestly, if there's any sort of uh, devouring involved, it'll be uh, Tempest in D minor. <laughs> oh, goodness me. So, yeah. Wait, wouldn't it be minor instead? No, it's it's always got a B minor, but she'd be in D minor. Oh, boys. But well, anywho, that ends issue 67. And, well, we move on to 68. Lux, you catching up with us? Lux? Huh? What? Are you caught up? Like, um... Yes, I am. Okay. Caught. All right. Wait, okay. can you just call Luximus Luxio? No, I said Lux. No, no, no. I'm talking about Norman. No. I... Oh, it sounded like you called her Luxio. Luximus Maximus. That's Have you right. been called Lucio? <laughs> exactly. Oh. You've been I, called you play... I've been called <laughs> Luxumus. Luximus. Luximus. <laughs> Luximus. Oh, God. Uh... That was one. <laughs> we have to show her to bring up Overwatch references. <laughs> Uh, Overwatch, we love that game. But anywho, while we move on to issue 68, we get a bit of a flashback. And I feel that this flashback is much better than the one we got in the movies because it's well-rounded, well flushed out. (coughs) So, long story short, she just... Too late. (laughs) She just retells (laughs) her story of how she lost her horn and how her friends dump her and stuff. And because of that, she got really, really edge lordy and goes to other places just to get more edgier and makes a deal with the Storm King to, well, get her horn back. That's what I think. So, getting back on track, we see Tempest Shadow underground crawling and crying because she's a big baby. Okay, it, I'm not going to make fun of her for this. She's being confronted by childhood trauma and about to get eaten. I think uh, anyone would ha- would rightfully freak out. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, I'm just kidding. I'm just being mean for no good reason. Plus, I got to lo- love uh, Andy Price's artwork, especially on the uh, Ursa Minor. It, there's this darkness around the mouth, so it's just a set of teeth mm-hmm. and a giant star on its forehead. In art, there's this... Uh, you can trigger people's survival instincts just by certain uh, key imagery. Fangs. Uh, a claws, a stinger, something that that says to us this is a threat in real life. That's why a lot of monsters are hybrids of various creatures. You just take the deadliest parts of each and stick them together, and you've got a new nightmare. And if you take a look, see at Tempest's eye, uh, there's a reflection of the Ursa in the well in the eye, which looks really cool. And then on the next yeah. page, where rescue arrives. Yep. So we, we, we see that Glitter jumps in and does a solar flare. And she you can see her through the Ursa Minor, which is very fascinating. Mm-hmm. I just wonder, though, shouldn't I then see a bunch of fish <laughs> in its gut? He didn't. She, the Ursa didn't eat. Like, the Kuma didn't eat anything. Like, you, you notice? He just dumps If the... you think about it, maybe he did eat the fish, but it just went right through him. Yeah, I, I guess you can say that you didn't agree with him. Oh, wow. Look at where you step. <laughs> well, it's not mostly where you step because Tempest had it in her puff as she was pointing at um, her friend, so I'm just going to stop right there. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Tempest, sorry. Um, Glitter Drop comes in, does a solar flare, and Bear's confused and runs away. Wow. Clearly, Glit- Tempest is pissed off at this because Glitter saved her life, and she doesn't want that. And she gets really, really angry, and Glitter just says she's sorry because she threw the ball, and it should be her that lost her horn, or even worse. And this sparks another side of her memory of what had happened before. Well, I, I got to correct you here, Norma. She never says... That glitter drop should have gotten her horn broken. No, I, I mean, I sorry, I didn't say tempest. I said glitter was the one that said it. Oh, okay. I thought for a minute there you were you were still talking about no, tempest. No. Tempest is just angry. But glitter did say oof though, so does that count? Oh yes. <laughs> no, please. <laughs> I mean, come no, on, it's right I, there it, in the comic. No, why well, did no. you have to point it out? <laughs> I owe so much money already. <laughs> 
Well, you see, it's different when you actually bump into something and that's just oxygen leaving your lungs from the impact. <laughs> Can't fault them there. No, it's when you just say it as a reaction. And I'm like, what does that even mean? Oh. And therefore I charge Safi like a swear jar. Even though I don't really curse on the show anymore. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> Please. Have mercy. <laughs> I like That's gonna looks. be rough on your account. <clears throat> Jokes on you! I don't have any money left. Well, <laughs> bro. <laughs> oh. Jokes on you! I'll take it. Oh, you'll take the debt off me? No. Thank you. No, I'll take the money. There is no money. I'll just take it anyway. Yeah. Okay. Bye. <laughs> just take it all away. Bye. Bye. But anywho, um. Glitter drops here, just retells the story, but she threw the ball to Tempest. Tempest couldn't catch it, and she was too scared to go take the ball. Tempest didn't really ask or didn't really say anything. She just went in, and for all this time, this is why Glitter Drop felt so guilty. And Tempest never thought about it that way, because she always thought that I, I just go, I just did it. She never thought about asking Glitter to do it and stuff. So this hits like a dump truck of realization that I did this on myself. So, and uh, I, I guess there's the question of when when Glitter first saw Tempest, we didn't see that reaction, but I, I could see her just sort of covering up her emotions, trying not to break down crying. I, I don't see this as emotionally inconsistent. The, the logic with Glitter Drop here is that she just met a really, really old friend that she cares about. Like, if you really think about it honestly, even remember it being in the novelization of it? I'm not really remembering it that well. When uh, Glitter Drop and his her friend, I forgot his name, uh, went back from school for the holidays or whatever it is, and wanted to meet up with Tempest, and she was just gone. So they couldn't really talk about it, and she's just vanished. Nobody knows who he was. And now this year, she gets to meet up again after years and years. She's not gonna go crying. She she just have to play it slowly, say hello and stuff. And when the time's right, she just talks about it. Except that she is crying because Tempest made her I cry. Know. She's a big meanie. Now Glitter needs some huggy wuggies. Indeed. But anywho, um, after the talk, Tempest is just. Confused. Use and just realize that oh, this is my fault and my, my friends are no, no, it's not their fault so they kind of make up and stuff Glitter Drop and Tempest goes and tries to find the bear because they still need to solve that problem what's the thing here? Well, I, I feel like it's more than just oh we need to go find the bear oh, it goes right back to Kings. Oh yeah, 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 yeah because during the thing where Tempest was threatening Glitter, she mentioned that she turned Luna, no, the princesses into stone. So, yeah, Glitter Drop brings that up. Like, wait, you're telling me that you turned Celestia and Luna into stone? And Cadence too? Yeah, and stuff. And she just, uh, Glitter Drop just says, Cadence is the best. She's, she might be, she might be more powerful than Celestia. And, uh, Tempest doesn't see it. And, well, here's something really interesting. Glitter brings up Sombra, and Tempest just asks, who the heck is Sombra? He didn't leave that big an impression, although she was pretty far removed. I gotta say, time has made this a little bit more bitter, though, because the next time Sombra came to town, Cadence couldn't even keep track of who was watching the baby. <laughs> I mean, ow! Yeah, here's the thing, Silver. The comic canon has a much positive light on Cadence. We established that a long time ago. Yeah, but, but here's the thing. This this ha hounds me anytime I get into a conversation about Cadence. People love to tell me she's great and awesome. It, even the show tells you that everyone loves her. And it's like, okay, but where's the action? Let me see how she expresses this greatness. Let me witness the greatness firsthand. I don't want to just be told she's great. I want to witness it. And the funny thing is... In this comic, she's helping Tempest reunite with an old friend and put a childhood uh, pain to rest and move beyond it. And that is awesome. That is great. And she's doing it with minimum interference, which contrasts against Twilight. 
I don't need glitter drops telling me she's awesome when I actually finally can say, yes, she's doing something awesome. Well, but Though I will admit, it's nice to see Andy Price's artwork of Nightmare Rarity, the Evil Universe, Celestia and Luna, and Accord. Mm-hmm. Though the less said about that arc, the better, I think. <laughs> but at least it did. I'm, I'm also guessing that those characters are in the comics only, right? Uh, yes. Most of them. So- Sombra and King and Queen Chrysalis, I think they might have something to do with the show canon at yeah, some but, point. Oh, yeah, yeah, obviously. No, but, but the rest <laughs> are just comic canon. No, but the thing is, like, uh, Glitter Drop here does, like, cadence because, well, for obvious reasons, because love and whatnot. But the way that she explains it, like, when Sombra was trying to come back, she she shielded the whole Crystal Empire from him for days. Is that correct, Silver? I, I don't really remember that. It's always been a little vague how long she was keeping the shield up. They did say she doesn't sleep and she barely eats. Mm, so, okay, that makes a bit of sense. She was holding the line, I would say, for at least several days. Right, right. But several is a vague term. At the same time, I'm like... She barely eats. Cadence, can you not keep the shield while having a sandwich? No, no, no. But I just like Tempest here. She says, what's a sombra? Oh, clearly you do not know that hacker. And her life is the better for it. Because sombra just takes all the fun out of the game. I hate her so much. <laughs> well, it's not like they, so, uh, Tempest asks who Doomfist is. <laughs> uh, That's because you know my name. <laughs> but anyway, she asks, um, Tempest asks Glitter, like, why did you abandon me? And the the thing is, Glitter never really realized what she did. But when she hears what Tempus have to say, it sounded oh, when you put it that way, it does sound like we were abandoning abandoning you. And the reason why is that whenever they played and Tempus tried to throw the ball or play with them with the ball. It made her sad, so they didn't want to make her even sadder. But by doing so, it made her sad. So it's a paradox of sadness here. And then we get interrupted by a bear. It's like, oh, the plot's involved again. No. No, it was just getting juicy. <laughs> yeah. But I do like Glitter here because um, she's there for a reason and she's doing her job. So Tempest just has to ask what's going on and stuff. And Glitter just says, shut up and listen. Because she points out stuff like, oh, look at this or, or just, did you hear that and stuff because um, they're tracking down the Ursa and they see that, oh he's there and he's asking for woos he's asking for yep. woos nice, very yep. nice so, um, Tempest here says, okay, let's go get it and catch it while Glitter says, no take a look, see, it's a baby bear looking for its parents he's lost and whatnot and with that realization it clicked to Tempest that the guy is scared and lost. He just wants to look for his mom and stuff. And Glitter here does have an idea how to make it happen. And suddenly, a Ursa Major comes along to bring along the little cub. Yay. And Tempest is saying, yo, you need to open up your <laughs> eyes. And before she could break into song, Glitter's like, nope, can't. Magicking. This is what? The third time she's brought up open up your eyes <laughs> yep i feel like tempest lost her her mr calling is an optometrist <laughs> uh, J- jeremy jeremy whitley is just playing with that a, a whole lot <laughs> but anywho um tempest is surprised by this because oh no um she didn't realize that her friend was doing this so with tempest's help glitter is guided by tempest to go and find the bear, or guide the bear to the mother. And after a long trek, Tempest has a lot of questions about what's going on and stuff, blah, blah, blah. And, well, it opens up her eyes, pun intended, to her friend and what she can really do. So once they are safe in the proper location, uh, Glitter Drop heals her spell and the real mama bear comes along. And, yeah, now it's time to get out of there. Get away from the giant star bears. You don't want to end up like those fish in one end and out the other. Although, if the fish weren't digested, then would a pony be digested? I don't want to know. Hmm. Oh, no, no. Torterra has opened this door. <laughs> How did I open the we're, door? We're just passing <laughs> through, if you know what I mean. Oh, my. Uh, but, uh, okay, he's got a good point. 
You're the one who proposed it, Tara. You've got to own it. <laughs> yeah, I cop. I took it. I copyright claimed it. Oh boy, oh no! You sick little <laughs> monkey. <laughs> but, but I'm not a monkey. But then you. That's now you. <laughs> Sorry, but you're now the Torterra monkey. Oh, well then. Oh, boys. But, but anywho, but anywho. Uh, once they travel or get back to camp, Glitter Drop just explains the truth. Like, um, she always wanted to work in the Everfree Forest, but every time she tries, it seems like something is going on over there. I mean, what's, what's up with that Ponyville place? It seems like it's cursed. And he, that was before Sombra returned and broke the tree at Harmony and the Everfree Forest invaded and all this stuff. So, so you want to take this part? Well, yeah, I, this part's a little curious for me. Uh, Tempest brings up, or well, returns to the question of why did you never contact me after you went to the school? Which seems like abandonment. And Glitter Drops explains that while they might have been exceptional in uh, in their hometown, they couldn't keep up with the school. This was like the major leagues. I mean, look, they got 40... They've got the equation for life, the universe, and everything. 42. It's on the blackboard, right there. But also, you do see a Harry Potter cameo there. Um, Slytherin teacher... Snape. Snape, yes. Snape's what you're focused on? I'm seeing Sunset Oh, yeah, Shimmer. I mean, the next panel Sunset. I don't know about you, but I'm like... Sunset Shimmer, best pony. Uh, Sunset Shimmer of the Cancel series. <laughs> oh, too soon. Oh, it's never too soon to make you cry. Basically, they couldn't keep up. But this is where it gets weird for me. So Tempest says, you know, that illusion spell you created was fantastic. And she just admits, oh, it was something, but neither of us were exactly princess material. Like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. All of Twilight's friends from Canterlot graduated from that school. Only she became a princess. The criteria of that school is not to create a princess. I just, I just like, why does everyone keep saying that somehow that school is supposed to be princess maker because material? Because it is um, Celestia School for Gifted Unicorns. Right, gifted unicorns, not school for princess crap. True that. I think it's just her mindset on the situation because she thinks that if uh, if I do better in school, I can be a princess. That's what Sunset was thinking. Sunset had her own stack of problems, especially being a princess's mm, protege. True that. I don't know why Silver's making a big deal out of this. It's not like, well, unicorns here except Safi. She should be the one that's complaining. <laughs> yeah, true that. Yeah, I'm not. Oh. Oh, I see. I see. I'm not allowed to complain because my OC is a hippogriff, you speciesist. Well, well you were the one that we... called me a monkey. No, you're a manky. You're a Torterra manky. It's the same very... thing. A Torterra is the same thing as a manky? You, you oh, know what God. I mean. No, I don't, because I don't know the Pokemans. Well, I'm going to teach you then. Well, but you just confirmed a Torterra is the same as a manky. That makes the No, manky is the same as a monkey. <laughs> well... Anyway, Tormenki here uh, is saying I have no right to comment because I'm not the right race. You speciesist. Okay. I don't, I don't even know if I can associate with you from now on. <laughs> but, but still, oh, but still um, this doesn't really explain the question, why did you abandon me? Well, it, it's not that they abandoned. It's that basically trying to keep up with this. I don't think they even got to write to her, their parents. I think this was just so all-consuming that it, it burned them out. And by the time they they left, Tempest had left, and so not not a willful abandonment, but just life really consumed them. And I think also the novelization or the novel that Tempest had was a bit off. Then you know what? This is one of those things where Canon B and Canon C were not talking to each other, and confusion happened. Well, I can I can add to that. Uh, there was a book about Grubber. Oh from the movie and how he always wanted to be Tempest's right hand right hoof henchman he wanted to be her supporter the spike to her twilight and then you see the movie where he's not even willing to go down to the base of a waterfall and he's like that's not the attitude of anyone who wants to be the best helper so I've never been as big a fan of the books because they're written for a much younger audience and I don't mean just in terms of, uh, you know, the story is simplified. No, I mean the actual prose is very simplified. I can finish a My Little Pony book oh, in five minutes. Yeah, and also the, what you would call this, uh, characterization are inconsistent. So I put a little bit more stock in these comics, but even they cannot seem to get around the show canon. Some, sometimes the comic has good ideas, but 
sometimes how do I put this? The comic has more freedom in what it can do, and yeah, the the show has to give way. Sorry, the comic has to give way to whatever the show wants to do. So yeah, that sucks. But anywho, case over. They go back to the Crystal Empire, and begrudgingly, Tempest has to go to Princess Cadence and report back. Ah, boys. And Cadence has just got this look <laughs> on her face. It's like, oh yeah, how was your humble pie? <laughs> uh, did you like it served with a slice of crow? I know it was definitely a la mode and very <laughs> cold. Yeah. So anywho, Tempest asks, how the hell did you know? How, how did you do it? How did you do it? How, how did you know about glitter drops and stuff? And Cadence just says, whatever do you mean? Oh my, her smug look, her smug look. Her final line. Just remember this the next time you wish there was a princess of military air supremacy. <laughs> yeah. It's like, why not? The, give that title to Rainbow Dash. She'll yeah, take it. That, um, okay. Yeah, but before that, Tempest just has to say something. And that word is thank you. Because all these years of trauma kind of buried now. And she is, or she can move along now. So that's that's good. And yeah, so that last line there, much awesomeness, and she's never gonna let that go. Great. With that, coming in. But not for long, as uh, Nightmare Nights would revisit Tempest very quickly. In fact, like, the month after, I think. People love the Tempest, yo. Yo. And, okay, uh, is Lux still there? Hello! Because you asked if Cadence was uh, planning on shipping anyone? Well, Luna remarks of Glitter Drops and Tempest that... They're frequently in one another's Why? dreams. <laughs> well then. Hmm. I want to say something, but I don't think it's meant for this podcast. <laughs> oh, what go ahead. What can you we've, say we've... more than boing? Uh, that's... that's not a word. <laughs> you know, now we've got to get we've got to get Torterra into sensitivity oh, yeah. training. Excuse me, I'm not yeah, that just... sensitive. That's the problem. Denying people commentary just because of their their species. Really, Torterra. But, but anyway, I just I can't, I can't even look at you right now. Well, Literally, you can't because we don't have we're webcams. not looking at each other right now. We're just talking over the internet. I'm just exactly. imagining Totera looking so, like um, Dusty Cat, yeah, but a younger version of Dusty Cat. That's what I'm imagining right now. <laughs> what are you calling Dusty no, species? No, 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 I'm just saying that Totera looks like Dusty Cat, but younger. I'm, all I'm thinking right now is. Uh, what kind of sensitivity training can we give Torterra to get him of the free of these speciesist ways? I am not speciesist. No, you're apparently by your own admission, you're a manky. <laughs> that, that's that you called me a manky. <laughs> anyway, uh, coming in. So, Silver, what are your impressions? Sorry, um, what are your final thoughts? My final thoughts is that we're getting up to some manky <laughs> business here. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, this is one of my favorite IDW arcs, and the main series has struggled for a while. I think there have been fun stories, but there have never been really great inside stories. And I think a lot of that has to do with how much you can do with the main cast, which is not a lot. I mean, the show is tackling that very often. I can point to a lot of issues like uh, Rarity and Fluttershy in Manhattan with the fashion trends. That was fun, but not necessarily a new insight into their characters. This is taking Tempest, who wasn't given a lot of time, for fleshing out. And it's doing just that. It's giving her expanded history, reconciliation. I think the comics are at their best and freest when they take a little or lesser known aspect of the show and expand on it. Because there's no worry about being contradicted by the show. That's a pretty low chance. And as a result, it feels more genuine. All right. And yeah, I do agree with that statement there too because it feels like the comic excels when it's let loose and it can do quote unquote almost anything because most of the fun that we had was well remember the arc with Big Mac uh, art of gazebo making or something like that uh, Zen yeah, and the Zen. art of gazebo repair that yes. was awesome like the main cast was not there but just take a look see at how that comic went two part two part right yep two parter it was awesome we we get to see Big Max in the thoughts. We just get to see Luna being insane, and this is just all for a box of nails. So yeah, I agree with you, Dasilva. So anyway, Tara, what do you think about this comic? 
I really like this comic. Like I said, my first impressions, I enjoyed it from the beginning to the end. I actually like the, how the backstory of Tempest losing her horn went more into detail, and the comedy was good. I really liked it. <laughs> All right. As for me, I love this comic a lot. I, I, like, <laughs> I like Andy Price's art. His art is just awesome. And if you went to BronyCon, uh, he was selling some exclusive art there. And the art was about the quote-unquote redeemed four, was it, Silver? The Yeah, the, the redeemed four, all the bad unicorns. We have Sunset and Tempest and Trixie and Starlight. Yeah, and it, the, 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 the artwork was awesome. Like, I, I love this one. I, I really love this work by him. And I'm a bit biased because I do like the Sunset and Tempest. And especially if it's drawn by him, he does a good job. Like, oh wow, that artwork. But anywho, um, yeah, uh, Andy Price's artwork is awesome. The way that the color was done, uh, Hedelbreco did it. Yes, Hedelbreco did the coloring for that one too. And the story was not bad. I, I really like the story. And especially if it didn't really uh, involve any of the main six deeply, it had a lot of leeway to do stuff. Oh, what else can I say about this comic except go go buy and read it if you can. It is the best. It's really the best. But now that you said it, I have to ask, do you know the way? <laughs> <laughs> no, I do not. But anywho, um, Seppi, what about you? Well, I'm just going to say it. Temptus is probably my favorite reformed villain at the moment If after uh, reading this comic. You know, right? <laughs> can we have a princess of the military? It's like, oh boy. I, I love her already. <laughs> I don't know. She didn't really leave much of an impact on me, like when I saw the movie. But after reading this comic, it's like you're not that bad. I like you. <laughs> awesome. Anyway, Lux, you finished reading? She should be the princess of logic <laughs> because she keeps calling everything out in the pony verse that's not right. <laughs> oh yeah. Sounds about right. Yeah. We, we didn't really highlight that, did we? I mean, Tempest here is what we um, as normal people think what should happen and yeah tempest is basically the audience at this point sounds about yeah, right I, I totally agree i totally agree so overall or at least the the really complaining <laughs> part of the audience <laughs> <laughs> but anyway lux overall what do you think of the comic did you, did you finish reading it um good art uh pretty nice eight out of ten maybe nine <laughs> oh so I, i'll take that i'll take that and with that comic review ends so anywho um silver what are we going to do next week well i think it's time to get back on track with the show because this season ain't a stopping for anybody all right, all right. and so we will return to find a bit of oh actually i think this is rather fitting while glitter and tempest may be you know developing feelings for one another uh meanwhile there's teen love in the air with she's all <laughs> yak <laughs> Oh boy, <laughs> nothing but shipping jokes. <laughs> mm -hmm. As far as the eye can see, it's better than a FedEx FedEx oh center. My. At least it's better than the United Postal Service, right? Ugh. I actually work at a shipping company, so... <laughs> oh! <laughs> Torterra, you've been holding out on me! <laughs> oh my god! Well, I mean... I mean, now is the time as any since we're talking about shipping Next here. Week we... Next week, we I want mean, you to do all of the shipping jokes. <laughs> <laughs> now, where's that going? Is it going to the States or is it coming here in Canada? I don't know, but next week, it's going to be that. So anyway, uh, next week, we will be reviewing Season 9, Episode 7, She's All Yak. That's going to be a fun review. So anywho, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmdshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at show. My personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on Twitter under MLP Silver Quill. You can also find me at DeviantArt under the same name. I'm on Equestria Daily, posting comics and editorials on Wednesdays. And if you do a search for YouTube for After the Fact or Silver Quill, there will be. You can also find me on Torterra's Last Nerve as I continue to make <laughs> jokes about him. Uh. <laughs> oh, boys. So, S -S Silver, when are you going to post that video of you throwing Pokeballs at Terra? Oh, give it, give it time. <laughs> All right. I can't wait to see that video on the YouTubes. Quote, wink, wink. I can't. Wink, wink. I, I can't. Wait, you can't? You can't wait? Oh, I didn't know you were so eager. I'll make sure no, to... No, that's not what I meant. 
So Tara, you, we've really got to work on your <laughs> word choice. You, you just Norman's infecting me with his word choices here. <laughs> oh, me likey. Well, I mean, first you're saying that torteras are the same as mangoes. <laughs> they are which not. Just makes, now you're saying you can't wait for a video. Of, I'm of going you insane here. <laughs> dealing with my great blue balls. <laughs> I don't know. I'm getting mixed signals from you. It's like it kind of hurts, but it kind of feels good, right? I mean, I guess that's a good thing because now you're confused. And in the Pokemon world, you kind of hit yourself when you're confused. Oh, I'm good. But I keep moving forward. So you're only encouraging me. <laughs> I'm going to hurt you in my confusion. Oh, no. But anywho, um, Steffi, where can the good people find you? You can find me on DeviantArt, Twitter, or pretty much any other social media such as Instagram under the name Anime Christy. I do art. Hi. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, the good people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tartara1324. Or they can just simply do a Google research about my name, and I'm pretty sure I'll be there in all the searches. And they can even find me on Patreon as well. Or they'll probably find me on Silva's channel th- with him throwing his great balls at me. Oh, yes. Many great nice balls. Nice, too. I-, I, can't wait th- I can't wait for that upload. This is also after BronyCon, by the way. Mm, it's not like we're recording this in advance before BronyCon. Oh yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So anyway, Lux, where can the good people find you? Go subscribe to Luximus on YouTube and find me on Twitter and DeviantArt on Tumblr at Luximus17. I do art and animations and sometimes OC stuff that I can't really like contain myself to do because that's really all that gives me life at this point. All right, dear. I hope the audience at home will enjoy your sense of humor, because we did. <laughs> anyway, also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date, and also Stitch Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on com. Links are in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With your support, you will get a week's already access to the Dune Discussion Podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank... Amy, Dr. Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Jeffrey, and also myself. Like, thank you so much, guys. You're great. So, anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Zisiva Quill. I am a Safi. And I am a Torterra. I'm Luximus. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode in BS show. Or probably confusing one. I, I don't know. I'm confused. See ya. I ship it. Bye. I'll handle the shipping. Lux, you want to give a goodbye? Bye. <laughs> This is what happens when you let a bean into my house. <laughs> <laughs> now, so let me tell you the difference between a Mankey and a Torterra. Well, we still actually have to do that uh, the Pokemon identification be- video. Yes. Where I, where I will get everything wrong. Oh, yes. See, that's exactly what a normal type would say, you mean. <laughs> mm. Mankey's not normal. He's fighting. Sure, sure. Super fighting Mankey. Pokemon.